Hello everybody. Functions are fundamental to the study of calculus. As a result, a variety of important types of functions are frequently encountered in calculus. Today, in this video, we are going to identify their graphs and learn how to shift their graphs. On the board, I've already drawn some of the important and most commonly used graphs. The first one illustrates the graphs of lines passing through the origin. The ones in red have positive slopes, whereas the ones in blue have negative slopes. The second and the third graphs are the graphs of f of x equals x squared and x cubed. Actually, these are the graphs of the form y equals x to the power n, where n is a positive integer. If you compare the graphs of these two functions, you can see that the graph gets flattened towards the x-axis for the values of x between minus 1 and 1 and rises more steeply for the values of absolute value of x greater than 1. These two graphs are the graphs of uh, functions when y is proportional, inversely proportional with x and x squared respectively. As you can see, these two graphs have asymptotes. The x-axis and the y-axis are asymptotes of these graphs. It is important because when you draw and shift the graphs, you need to know where your asymptotes are. Here are the graphs of y equals x to the power 3 over 2 and 2 over 3. Recall that x to the power 3 over 2 is the cube of x, uh, square root of x, whereas x to the power 2 over 3 is the square of cube root of x. These two graphs are the graphs of natural exponential function and natural logarithmic function. Uh, actually, they are the inverse pair. That's why their graphs are symmetrical with respect to the line y equals x and the domain of one becomes the range of the other. And for y equals e to the power x, the x-axis is your asymptote. And for the natural logarithmic function, the y-axis is the asymptote. Now these are the last two graphs we are going to talk about, which are the graphs of the square root and cube root functions. Now, once we learned about the commonly used graphs, now we can concentrate on shifting graphs. Actually, we categorize shifting graphs in two cases, vertical and horizontal. In both cases, you know the graph of f. And if you want a graph of y equals f of x plus k, the only thing you need to decide if k is positive or negative. If k is positive, you shift the graph of f up k units. If it is negative, down by absolute value of k units. And for horizontal shift, you need to look at this one, y equals f of x plus k. Again, if k is positive, you shift it left k units. If k is negative, you shift it right by absolute value of k units. Now, let's see several examples to understand the concept better. Now, let's try to graph y equals x squared plus 2. Now, if we call x squared to be f of x, we can express x squared plus 2 as f of x plus 2. Now, we already know that. If I can write it in this form, it means that I can shift the graph of f two units up to obtain the graph of y equals x squared plus 2. So actually, the vertex, which is at 0, 0, becomes at 0, 2, and this will be your new graph. And then we can look at this example, y equals 1 over x squared minus 2, and if you call f of x squared to be 1 over x squared, then you can express it as f of x minus 2, which means you need to shift it down two units. Now be careful. As we talked before, it has a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. When you shift it down by two units, actually the vertical asymptote is not going to be affected, but your vertical asymptote will come to the point here. And the new vertical asymptote will be equal to y equals minus 2. And if you shift the graph down by two units, 
you will obtain these. Now, let's look at this example. y equals ln, f of, uh, ln x plus 1. Now, let's call f of x to be ln x. Then this one can be written as f of x plus 1. Left 1 unit. Now, remember the natural exponential function has a vertical asym uh, asymptote. And if I shift it left by 1 unit, it will come to this point and your new vertical asymptote will be x equals minus 1. And when you shift the graph, you will obtain the graph of y equals ln x plus 1. Let's look at this example. If you call f of x to be equal to x to the power 2 over 3, then this is your f of x minus 1, which means you need to shift the graph of f one unit right, which means this is your new graph. Now, we can also work with a combination of these vertical and horizontal shifts. Now, I write this example here. You see it has both. Actually, if you call f of x to be 1 over x, you see that you can write this one as f of x minus 1 plus 2 which means I need to shift it up by two units and right by one unit. Now, again, it has a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. Uh, if you shift it right one unit, then your vertical asymptote will come at this point and the equation of this one will be x equals 1. And if you shift it up by two units, then your horizontal asymptote will come to this point and its equation will be equal to y equals 2 and this will be your new graph. Of course, a short video like this can only be a superficial introduction. Naturally, you will learn more and in fact a lot more in your lectures. I hope this video will help you in your future studies. See you in our next video.